What's up guys, my name is Michael and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today, we are going to go over Candy 1, which is an ad hoc problem. This is the last problem I'm going to upload for today, and then I'm going to do some of my homework. But yeah, I might not be able to upload every day now. And there might be some days I have to upload like more than once, but yeah, it is what it is. We'll see what happens. But anyway, in this problem, basically there's a bunch of candies and uh, children will get angry if they don't have the same amount of candies. And uh, what Jennifer's trying to do as a teacher is she's going to open every single bag of candies and she's going to try to rearrange the candies so that every person get the same even number of candies. All right. So, um, yeah, so the input line is the number of candies followed by the number of candies in each packet. And then the, yeah, the, uh, yeah, the number of lines in each packet. And then the pretty much after that, there's just the last, well, the last number is negative one. So yeah. Um, so basically what we're going to output is the smallest number of moves it takes to make them all the same. So we're going to move packets in each of the array. So we're going to move each packets in each of the array. And we want to have the smallest number of moves created for each block of uh, packet. So one move consists of taking one candy from one packet and putting it to another. Um, if it's not possible, then we output negative one. Okay. So yeah, this problem is actually not that difficult. So I'll, I'll just explain it. So to do this problem, easiest way, let's say I have a1, a2, a3 up to n, a of n, and I want them all to have the same number. So the same number, same number. The easiest way to do this is actually to, easiest way to do this is actually to get the average, because if the average, if you add sum them all up, to a of n right and then divide by the number of, of size right if we sum them all up and divide by n that's going to be the most even um, uh the smallest number of ways you could probably do it because they're all even at this point and then how far they are from this the average is going to be the easiest one because like if you make it the highest value that'll be that's too high right the lowest value would have to get added way too much. And if you make it the lowest value, the highest value would have to decrease way too much. So the easiest way is actually to make all the, all the values here become close to the average as possible, because that's, that's how, uh, that's the closest way to do it. Right. If the average is like the most center center value, right. So then if you decrease all of them or increase all of them, it'll, it'll get to, it'll minimize the number of moves it would take to get to all of them being the same. So what can we do with the average? Um, if the sum of all of a of i, right, over n, if this is actually not even, so if this is actually um, like a double, if this is a double, then we know that the, the array a1, a2, up to a of n, this array is not possible to, if the average is a decimal, then that means that this array you you can't you can't actually make them all even numbers right it's, it's going to end up having like one number is going to be way too large and the other one and the other one would be way too large in the sm small one right so that's that's what would happen if the average is double so uh, to check if it's possible or not we just have to check if the average is a double or not now how do we calculate the number of moves it would take to actually make all these even assuming it is possible so if it if the average is like fine right for if the average for this, this is the average. If the average of all these numbers is not a double, so that means it's possible to make them all, make them all equal to it. Um, all we have to do is just subtract the difference it would take from each of these numbers with the average. So the average would be like so. If we want them all to become the average, we just have to subtract the average from all of each of these, right? And then we add them up, right? Because that would be the number of moves it would take to move each of these to become the same number, right? If you were to subtract uh, the average from A1, that was gonna be the number of moves it would take to A1 to either increase it up to average or decrease it down to average, right? If it would, then we add it with how many times it would take A2 to get to average, right? Because average is gonna be uh, the, the value that we want all the numbers to, to end up being, right? We want all the numbers to have 
same number as the average. So if we take A2 and subtract by the average, that's gonna tell us how many moves it would take for A2 to either get to the average. So A2 would get a, either increase or decrease to get up to the average. And when that happens, all these values, when you sum them up up to N and add up, add up all the, the difference between the average, difference between A of I and the average, it would tell you, if you add them all up, it'll tell you the total number of moves it would take. And this total number of moves is the smallest because the average is the, the closest one for all of them to be, right? The closest value that all these values can possibly be. And it would be the minimum number of moves it would take to get them all to be the same number. So yeah, um, yeah, I'm going to explain the code now and how to do it. Okay guys, so I'm gonna explain the code to you guys now. Okay, so I read an N and they said to keep keep doing this until th your value that you read is equal to negative one. So that's why I did while N is not equal to negative one. And then in the end, I keep reading an N because that's when the condition ends, right? In the end, you have to keep reading N. Uh, if it does equal to negative one, it would stop and then it would not read N again. But that's a really weird input statement, but that is how it is. So I have sum equals zero, and then I have an array of vectors of data, and then I loop through from one to n, and then I'm going to read in every value of the, my array, and then I'm gonna add sum equal to that, okay? So sum is gonna add all the values of the array. I'm gonna get the average, I'm gonna store into an integer because this is gonna check if it's, a, if it's divisible by it or not, right? I'm gonna check that later. But yeah, I do take sum and I divide by n to get the average. So now here's where the stuff is gonna happen. Um, if the average multiplied by n, so if I take the average and multiply by n, and it's equal to the sum, that means I, it is possible to divide them evenly. Otherwise, I print out negative one. Because remember, we wanted to check if it is possible or not to make them all uh, the same value, right? The same evenly distributed to all of them, so that's the average. And uh, if the average is a double, then it's not possible, right? It's just not possible. And you could check that just by multiplying it by the original number of n that you just divided by, and it should equal to the original sum, right? If this was a double, then this would not equal to each other. So yeah, then it would be negative one if the, in that case. But anyway, um, now here's the gist of it. We have number of moves that we have to add that we're gonna print out. Um, so originally, when I made this video, I thought that you had to subtract for every single value. But now I think about it, you actually don't need to because uh, you don't have to subtract every value of data from the average because all we ha want to do is redistribute the ones that are greater than the average, right? So the ones that are va the values that are way greater than the average, you wanna distribute that. Like if I have, let's say I have like, I don't know, two, four, uh, one, two, four, uh, five. Right, so six plus five, this is, this is 12. Oh wait, no oh, wait, uh, two, one, two, three plus four. So 12 divided by four is three, right? So the average here is three. Let's say I have this. Um, if it is greater than the average, four and five are greater than the average of three. So I wanna redistribute for all the values that are greater than the average to the other lower two, right? I wanna redistribute this number. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take four minus three. So I'm gonna take the current number. If it's greater than, I take it and then subtract it from the aver uh, average. So I take four minus three and that'll take, give me one, one candy to donate to the other two. So that would, then this would become three and then the one candy I could just donate to here. So this would become two. And then I could donate this, this also. So five minus three is gonna give us two and I could redistribute this two to the here and here, right? So it's you would only subtract, redistribute candies if it's greater than the average. If it's less than the average, you don't redistribute candies. So that's why in the code here, if the data of the current value that I'm iterating through is greater than the average, then I just sum up the number of moves it would take, which is gonna be the num current number and subtract it from the average. And then after that, after I sum them all up, I just print out number moves. And later on, this actually got AC'd. So yeah, that's the code. I hope you guys enjoy this video. Rate, comment, subscribe.
I'm, I'm done uploading today. But yeah, I'll check you guys later. Peace.